How's it going, folks? I'm Deswood Despot, and this is the brand new Chorus Pod 2. And as the name implies, it's a running pod. But the other reason they call it a pod is because the pod stands for their performance optimization device. So I guess let's go ahead and first start out this video with why you may even need a running pod in the first place, since your watch already collects a lot of data on its own. Well, the first reason you may need a running pod is that running pods can provide much more accurate real-time pace than GPS, especially with quick changes in effort. So GPS is definitely getting better and better, but there still can be some amount of delay. So if you're looking for near instant feedback with something like a heart interval, you'll want something like a foot pod or an accessory. And then another reason why you may want a running pod is that in certain environments, GPS signals can get a little bit iffy, like around really tall buildings. So if you happen to lose GPS in that sort of situation, not only can your pace be off, but also the final distance that's collected for your run. That's again where a foot pod can be handy, where it's still going to be tracking your pace and distance, even if you lose GPS. And related to that, since a foot pod can track your pace and distance without GPS, you can also use a foot pod to get more accurate results for running indoors, whether you're on a treadmill or a track. And then another reason beyond those that I just mentioned for a foot pod is running power. But just an important note though, is that the pod two doesn't provide running power, but you really shouldn't need it with the pod two though, because most of the watches that actually are compatible with the pod two already collect running power from the wrist currently. Okay, so with all that out of the way, now let's talk about the Pod 2 itself and what it can do for you and how well it actually works. And one more quick note is that if you do find the information in this video useful, do me a favor and just quickly hit that like button down below. It's a small little thing that you can do that'll help this video and the channel quite a bit, and I appreciate it. Okay, so first off, let's talk about what you actually get with the Pod 2. So you'll get the Pod 2 itself along with a dedicated charger. It also comes with a very nice carrying case. You also get a USB-A to USB-C charging cable two clips for attaching the Pod 2 to your shoes, and then another clip which you can use to attach the Pod 2 to your waistband, along with manuals and safety information. And then for price, the Pod 2 runs 99 bucks. And another important note is that it's only compatible with Chorus watches, namely the Pace 2, the 42 and 46 millimeter Apex, the Apex Pro, the original Vertex 1, the Vertex 2, and then of course, any new watches that they may come out with in the future. The Pod 2 connects via Bluetooth and you'll actually first pair it with the Chorus app. And when you do this, it'll actually get automatically added to your external sensors on whatever Chorus watches you have on your account the next time your watch syncs. And what's also nice about the pairing experience with a Chorus watch is that it also provides a battery indicator for the Pod 2 as well as any other Chorus accessories. The Pod 2 itself is super lightweight as you can imagine, so it's not gonna be adding any additional weight. It's water resistant down to three ATM, so it should be perfectly fine even in a heavy rainstorm. It's rechargeable with a battery life of around 28 hours of continuous running, and then it can be in standby mode for about 50 days. And then the included charger also doubles as a battery pack for the Pod 2 where it can provide five additional charges. Now, although this is a tiny little device, it actually packs in quite a few sensors on board. So it has a barometric altimeter, it has an accelerometer, a gyroscope, a magnetic compass, as well as a thermometer for providing temperature data. Quite a bit in this little thing. Okay, so now with all these specs and housekeeping stuff out of the way, let's talk about what kind of data the Pod 2 can actually provide. And we're first gonna start out with real-time pace. So real-time pace has been kind of a long time complaint with runners where if you're just using GPS, there can be a good amount of delay when your pace suddenly changes, like anywhere from like five to 15 seconds of delay, where if you're doing a 30 second interval, well, that's a long time to wait to get feedback. So just to give you a rundown of the real life testing scenario I'm about to show you for the real time pace accuracy, I was wearing the Pace 2 on my left wrist and I had that paired with the Pod 2 on my left shoe. Then I was carrying a Chorus Vertex 2 in my left hand and this wasn't paired with the Pod 2, so this was just using its built-in dual band side light system setting for pace and distance. And then I also had a Phoenix 6 Sapphire paired with a Stride Foot Pod and this was just stashed in my running vest. And then I was also carrying an Enduro 2 in my right hand paired with a Garmin HRM Pro Plus heart rate monitor that also can provide provide better pace and distance. And then finally a Google Pixel watch that I was wearing on my right wrist just because I needed to wrap up testing on it. Okay, so here's the first test that I did for real-time pace. And this is against the Vertex 2, just using its built-in GPS, where I'm starting out right around an eight minute pace. And we see that everyone lines up. About five seconds later, as I started to increase pace, we see that I'm about a 746 mile with the Pod 2 and the Vertex 2 was still reporting that same eight minute pace. Fast forward again another five seconds and I'm at a 724 pace with the Pod 2 and the Vertex 2 is still reporting that eight minute pace. And then 10 seconds after that, so this is right now 20 seconds after I started to increase pace, we now start to see the Vertex 2 reflect the increase in pace. And then finally around 30 seconds or so after I reached my top speed, the Vertex 2 was pretty close. And then when it comes to slowing down, it also took a while for the Vertex 2 to reflect that slower pace. 
And then next up, we have the Enduro 2 with the HRM Pro Plus heart rate strap. And basically the same test, starting out right around at eight minute pace and ramping up to about a 6.30 pace. And the response time from the HRM Pro Plus was nearly the same as the Pod 2, so very good stuff. And then for slowing down after the interval, again, super close out of both of them, but probably a slight edge to the Pod 2 where it was maybe like one to two seconds more responsive than the HRM Pro Plus. And then finally, let's also look at the Phoenix 6 Sapphire paired with the Stride Foot Pod. And the Stride didn't seem to be quite as sensitive as the Pod 2 or the HRM Pro Plus with those quick changes. Still quite good, but maybe about a three second delay behind those other devices, but still much better than the Vertex 2 just using GPS alone. Oh, and then I almost forgot to mention that I also did test it against the Foreigner 955 with just dual band GPS without being paired to any other sensor. And the reaction time was definitely a bit slower than the HRM Pro Plus and the Stride Foot Pod where there was about a six to seven second delay, but it seemed to be a bit more responsive than the Vertex 2. And then at the end of that run, the distance lined up perfectly fine between all the devices I was testing, so good to go there. Okay, so from the results of that run, super impressive out of the Pod 2 with the Pace 2 when it comes to real-time pace accuracy, but we can see the responsiveness even more clearly if we take a look at the data that the watches were collecting in regards to speed. So the Pod 2 that was paired with the Chorus Pace 2 is an orange. The Chorus Vertex 2 that was just all on its own using its dual band GPS for pace and speed is in purple. The green light that you see is the Garmin Enduro 2 with the Garmin HRM Pro Plus heart rate strap. And then we have the Phoenix 6 Sapphire with the Stride Foot Pod in light blue. So to start out with, the Phoenix 6 Sapphire with the Stride Foot Pod had a little bit of a blip right here, so that was a little bit strange, but let's actually take a look at the intervals. So on this first interval, the Pace 2 in orange paired with the Pod 2 was right in line and pretty much just as responsive as the Enduro 2 with the HRM Pro Plus heart rate strap, while the Vertex 2 and Phoenix 6 Sapphire with the Stride Foot Pod match up pretty closely as well, but as you can see, they were quite a bit slow in responding. Then here we see that the Vertex 2 had a little bit of a blip with speed, but again, it's probably more important to look at the intervals. So on this second interval, we see all the devices do a better job this time around, where the Stride Foot Pod with the Phoenix 6 was now very close to the Pod 2 and Enduro 2, where the Vertex 2 didn't quite catch the top speed of that interval. And I think the same thing can be said on most of the remaining intervals as well, where we see similar results out of the Pod 2, the Stride Foot Pod, and the HRM Pro Plus heart rate strap. So does the Pod 2 actually work for better real-time pace accuracy? Absolutely, really good stuff. And I'd probably argue the most responsive with the HRM Pro Plus being a very close second and the Stride Foot Pod being a very close third. And then another thing that the Pod 2 can do is provide better estimations when it comes to pace and distance while running indoors on a treadmill or indoor track. So again, I had the Pod 2 paired with the Pace 2 on this run. It was very good compared to the commercial treadmill that I use, which tends to be pretty accurate when it comes to pace and distance within just four one hundredths of a mile off on this four mile run. And for comparison, the Chorus Vertex 2 was a little bit over, not like wildly off or anything like that, but still pretty darn good for just being collected on the watch itself. The Enduro 2 I was using with the Garmin HRM Pro Plus was pretty much the same as the Pace 2 with the Pod 2. And then the Stride Foot Pod was actually a little bit under surprisingly. Now the total distance is one thing, but let's also talk about the real time pace during that treadmill run. So what I did in this run is basically just gradually increase pace as I went along. And as you can see, the Pod 2, the HRM Pro Plus, and the Stride Foot Pod all reflected those changes in pace pretty well, while the Vertex 2 was kind of reporting more of a consistent pace throughout the entire run, even though I was increasing the pace as the run went along. So let's just go ahead and remove the Vertex 2 for the moment, just so we can look at the other data a little bit more closely. So here's where we can see that although the Stride Foot Pod was very clean in regards to tracking the pace, it was also underreporting just slightly compared to the Pod 2 as well as the HRM Pro Plus, which is why we may have seen the Stride data come up just a little bit short. The HRM Pro Plus, however, you can see was a little bit more shaky, although it was tracking pretty well, including the increases. But the Pod 2, gotta say, that was probably the cleanest out of all of them and was able to track the final surges at the end of the run quite well. So for indoor running pace and distance estimation, again, I gotta say, really good stuff out of the pod too. Another new thing that Chorus is talking about today is what they call effort pace. And this is replacing their term adjusted pace that you may have seen on your Chorus watch. And this is a similar concept to grade adjusted pace. The reason behind effort pace or grade adjusted pace is that pace all on its own can be a great indicator of performance if all things are created equal. So if you're on completely flat ground and there's no wind, well, pace can be a great indicator of your performance. However, if there's hilly terrain, that's where pace can be skewed. So if you're going up a hill at the same level of effort that you're running on flat ground, well, your pace is gonna be slower. Same thing goes if 
you're running downhill is that the same level of effort will likely translate into a faster pace. So that's where effort pace or grade adjusted pace comes into play, where this metric takes into account the grade of the terrain that you're running to give you a more relatable figure that you can think of effectively translates into what you would be running on flat terrain at the same effort just with grade accounted for. But another reason they're renaming their adjusted pace to effort pace is that they also have plans to incorporate environmental factors into their formula, including temperature, humidity, altitude, and more. So it's going to be interesting to see where they go from here with effort pace. Now, you actually don't need the pod 2 for effort pace. However, Core says that using the pod 2 can make effort pace a lot more responsive. And for my testing, in terms of the response time, yep, definitely what I'm seeing. And the actual numbers that the pod 2 paired with the pace 2 were delivering were very much in line with the vertex 2 that was just using GPS. And then I also saw very similar results when compared with the Enduro 2 that uses the term grade adjusted pace. Now, effort pace or grade adjusted pace doesn't necessarily replace running power though, where running power is a more independent data point when it comes to the amount of power that you're exerting at a given time. So running power is an effective metric on hilly terrain, just like grade adjusted pace, but where grade adjusted pace or effort pace isn't really all that useful is in windy conditions where running power is just a much more useful data point in that sort of scenario. And again though, since most course watches currently support risk-based running power, you can actually benefit from both running power as well as effort pace. Oh, and we should also talk about how they actually offer both a clip for your shoe, or actually two clips for your shoe, as well as a clip for your waistband. And the data that the Pod 2 collects actually differs on where you wear it, and it just automatically knows whether you're wearing it on your shoe or if you're wearing it on your waistband, which is kind of neat. So when you wear the Pod 2 on your shoe, it attracts all those things that we just talked about, like better pace and distance, better effort pace, cadence, stride length, temperature, elevation gain and loss, as well as altitude. But when you wear it near your waist, it actually doesn't collect the pace, distance, cadence, or stride length, but then it will collect left and right balance, ground contact time, stride height, stride ratio, as well as temperature and then elevation. So you do have to sort of pick and choose there in regards to some of the data that the Pod 2 collects depending on the location that you're wearing it. So when it comes to delivering on what course claims the Pod 2 can do, A+, where for real-time pace, super impressive, where it's incredibly responsive. And then for indoor running distance estimation, again, super solid. So for those of you looking for these sort of things, and especially with winter coming along where some of us may be running on a treadmill or track, this is definitely worth a look. There's really only two issues I see with the Pod 2, and the first of which is that it's Bluetooth only and there's no AND+, plus, which is not a huge deal, but the bigger issue that I see is that it's only compatible with Chorus watches, which is different than something like a Stride Foot Pod. I just see that as being a little bit of a missed opportunity there, where if we were open to all watches that support Foot Pods, well, it would make this device even more compelling. Anyhow, I'd also love to hear about what you think about the Pod 2, so definitely leave your thoughts in the comments section down below, and if you found the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor and just quickly hit that like like button and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more sports tech videos that are coming soon. In the meantime, happy running and we will see you in the next video.